30. It's drizzling outside. Izzy's chest is bothering him. Tight, he says, putting his hand on his breastbone. And he coughs and coughs and coughs. They decide to stay in. Izzy lies on the couch, his legs covered with a blanket. Not a very good day for Scrabble, is it? Rachel says. Go home. You don't have to stay. I'll hang around for a while. It's boring. For you? She says. For you. Not for me, Grandpa. I'm fine. Look at me. I'm happy as a bug in a rug. She's sitting back in his chair, eating an apple, her feet up on the magazine table. You know what I'd like, though? I'd like to see your pictures. What pictures? Snapshots. Photographs. Do you have any albums? What do you want with pictures? No matter what she says, he always has to resist. (sighs) It's a code of honor. Or maybe it's just habit and he can't help it. I'd like to see you when you were younger. Nobody took my picture. Why not? I bet you were cute. I didn't like it. The blanket rises and falls with the rise and fall of his chest. I never liked having my picture taken. How about Grandma Eva? Oh, her. He sits up, pushes the blanket off impatiently. She liked it. Hold up a camera, and she stood right in front of it and smiled. So you have pictures of her. Where are they? What for? You know what she looks like. True. Her mother has pictures with Grandma Eva and their album at home. But maybe you have some different ones? You probably do. Pictures, he says breathily. What use are pictures? Take a picture. Smile. Look happy. Everyone always wants to take a picture. It's so you can remember things. It helps you remember. If you didn't have pictures of Grandma, how would I know what she looked like? What difference does it make? It makes a difference to me. Rachel is enjoying this verbal boxing match. She used to give up when Izzy got this brusque argumentative tone of voice. Now she just keeps going. Where have you got them hidden, Grandpa? I know you have pictures someplace. Are they in your bedroom? I'll go get them. You don't have to get things in my house. He gets up and goes into the other room. He opens a bureau drawer, pulling out things. It's something. Pulling out things. And pulling out the drawer as if it's extremely heavy. Then slowly pushing aside clothes, linens, various things wrapped in plastic bags. He closes the drawer, puffing, then struggles with the middle one. Grandpa, can I do that? She knows he's weaker, has less strength for walking, but it never occurred to her that opening a bureau drawer could be so difficult. In the bottom drawer, he finds a manila folder. A manila manila envelope stuffed with pictures. Rachel sits down on the bed next to Izzy. The pictures are brownish. The paper has gone soft with age. Izzy pushes aside pictures of men in fedoras and women in mid-calf length dresses. Who are they? Rachel says. Just people. Friends of yours and grandma's? It's nothing. They're all dead. Wait, let me see these. She takes her time over snapshots of him and her grandmother. Grandpa, what a handsome devil. And Grandma was beautifully right. There are pictures she's there are pictures she's never seen before. One she likes especially. Eva, perhaps fourteen or fifteen years old, standing on the roof peak of a house, wearing a dress with big lace collar hands on her hips and looking into the camera, straight into it, the glint with a glint of a smile. Rachel can't stop looking at the picture. This was her grandmother, this girl, this young person, this serious and smiling young woman. I wish I'd known her. You want this picture? Oh, yes, but don't you want it? It's for you. 
Thank you. She kisses him. He lies back on the pillows and talks about his family, his parents, his older brother, his three sisters. My father came here first with his father from Poland. He met my mother here. They were poor. Nobody had time for things like playing. You grew up fast. When I was 13, I was a man already. He closes his eyes, opens them a moment later. She sang, my mother. She would sit at the table and drink tea and sing. He falls asleep. Rachel sits there and looks at the pictures. Suddenly, Izzy wakes up and says, I built her a house. Who, your mother? Eva. You ask your mother. That's where she grew up for a while, in the house I built. A brick house, built it myself. He sits up, becomes animated. I don't mean I hired somebody. I hear people talking. I did this. I did that. They didn't do it. They just paid for it. (coughs) We had to sell it. Some problems about money. He puts his hand to his chest as if to hold in breath. Save it. Preserve it. Eva said, we're going to sell the house. Don't worry, it's going to be all right. She was very practical practical about money. He stops, breathes, takes out his handkerchief, coughs into it. I always gave her my paycheck every week. Rachel thinks about her grandmother who stood on a roof when she was 15 and got married when she was 17. How did she learn to be practical about money? Where'd you meet Eva, Grandma? Uh, Grandpa? Look, close, button. Close. Voice memos. Card overlay. Half screen. Dimmed. Speech off. Rachel. Ah, who remembers, he says, and remembers. I met her on a beach. What beach? What does that matter? Fairview, Lake Lake Ontario. She was coming out of the water all wet. And I saw her and I said to my friend who was with me, look at that girl. Now that's what I call a beautiful girl. Eyes, eyes open. Beautiful girl. His eyes open as if he's looking through a window. And when she walked by me, I looked right at her. Very bold. I was bold in some ways, but very quiet. Backward. In others. I didn't know how to talk. How to start up with a girl. So. He wipes his mouth, sinking back against the pillow breathes. I kept going to the beach. Every Saturday I went and hoped I would meet her. She was always there. She was a wonderful swimmer. I would go in swimming and hope to meet her in the water. Did you? What happened? What happened? One day she's not swimming. She's running on the beach. So just like that, I don't know what came over me. I got up and started running with her. He's tired. His voice is hoarse, his breath is raspy. From there, everything happened, the whole story. We got to know each other. A few times a week now, Rachel stays and eats supper with Izzy. She cooks hamburgers, boils potatoes, throws a piece of steak down onto a frying pan. Does it smell good, Grandpa? She can't cook the way her mother does. But you can usually get him to eat a little. Later, Manny and Shirley come over to pick her up. But first they sit around and talk to Izzy for a while. Sometimes they stay for an hour or two, watching TV with him while Rachel does her homework. Tonight, though, Lewis is coming over. We're going to a basketball game, Grandpa. Mm-hmm. 
He walks slowly by the kitchen, slowly washes off his plate. He wants to meet you. Rachel tries, um, dries the dishes, puts them away. Mm Uh-huh. When the doorbell rings, she and Izzy are in the living room watching TV. I'll get it. She jumps up. Grandpa, do I look okay? He glances at her, shrugs. Louis is wearing white sneakers and a long overcoat. There's a fragrant odor of shampoo and soap coming from him. She squeezes his fingers. Come meet my grandfather. He follows her in and she makes the introductions. Louis, this is my fa- grandfather, Mr. Shapiro. An extended a hand extended, Louis bends over Izzy, who didn't even get up to greet him. But that's okay, Rachel thinks quickly. He's old. He's sick. Grandpa, this is Louis Oliver Olswanger. Why did she throw in Louis's middle name? It sounds pretentious. Izzy picks right up on it. So your name is Louis Oliver Olswanger. Rachel stares at her grandfather. Did he do that on purpose, dragging out Lewis's name, making it sound silly? What kind of a name is that? Lewis, just Lewis is what they call me, Mr. Shapiro. He is still standing there with his hand out, waiting to shake Izzy's hand. Izzy takes Lewis's hand, Lewis's clean, thin, long-fingered hand in his own broad, gray palm, but he doesn't shake. He turns Lewis's hand over and over, examines it like some kind of foreign matter. Rachel watches this, transfixed. She knows Izzy, she knows something is coming, something she's probably not going to like. No strength in this hand, Izzy says. You couldn't do stonemasonry. You couldn't be a stonemason with hands like this. His breath whistles in his chest. He drops Lewis's hand discarded discards it really lewis doesn't look at rachel his face is flushed his ears are blazing her own face is hot and her stomach is lurching she looks from one to the other she wants to defend lewis to izzy grandpa give him a chance he'd like him and just as much she wants to defend Izzy to Lewis. Don't think he's like this all the time, Lewis. Uh, he's really nice underneath. Well, go on, Izzy says. He reaches out to change the channel. Go on, Rachel. You're going out, aren't you? Rachel gets her jacket. Goodbye, Grandpa. See you tomorrow. He waves dismissively doesn't look up at the, from the TV. I thought, Lewis says as they are going down the stairs, from all the things you've said about him, that he's this great old man. Well, he is, Rachel says quickly. Yeah? You mean he's not always like that? Like what? <laughs> Rachel says as if she doesn't know exactly what Lewis means. Rough, Lewis says. Is he always as rough as today? He doesn't have smooth edges. He's not a slick guy. I feel sorry for you, Rachel, stuck with him every day. Save it, Lewis. Nobody's forcing me. Her hands are okay. Her words are okay, but her tone is curt. He shrugs and grins and strides along and doesn't say anything else. Lewis? Yeah? Hold on a minute. You're walking too fast. He shrugs again, but slows down. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Um, hold on. I'm sorry about that. It doesn't matter. It does. That ridiculous thing with your hands? I don't know. Lewis holds up his hands. He's right, isn't he? I couldn't be a stonemason. Do you want to be a stonemason? Not the last time I thought about it. I didn't mean to snap at you. It's okay. Are you still mad at me? Lewis shakes his head. Are you sure? Are you sure? Pretty sure. You are mad at me. I'm not. 
Yes, you are. Wait a second. She reaches up and kisses him. Well? Mm, Still mad. He mumbles against her lips. You gotta try harder. Done. Dimmed button. Speech off. He didn't, Shirley says to Rachel the next morning. Did he really? Manny, did you hear this? She calls to Rachel's father. From the living room couch where he's reclining in his stockinged feet, conducting HMS Pinafore, Manny calls back, What? I can't hear you. Rachel follows her mother into the living room. I'm called Little Buttercup, dear Little Buttercup. I'm called Little Buttercup, dear Little Buttercup. Her father's large, pudgy hands rise and fall with the notes. Flash of gold ring. The record spins. The needle hops. Buttercup is suddenly a step ahead of the great conductor. I like Tony. I like Tony Martin myself. Shirley says, turning down the music, and she tells Manny about Izzy's examining Lewis's hands. When her mother was listening to Rachel a few minutes ago, she had a serious, understanding expression. She nodded her head, pursed her lips disapprovingly, but now telling Manny the same thing? She's heard from Rachel, she starts laughing. (laughs) My father's so impossible! And Manny laughs, too his face creasing up like a pudding. It's not really funny, you guys, Rachel says from the doorway. You're right, darling, Manny says. Anyway, I'm sure he didn't mean anything by it. Daddy, Grandpa was being mean. I saw it on his face. I couldn't believe it was happening. He just met Louis for the first time, and he was definitely being killer mean. No, no, you've got to understand, Izzy's whole life was spent working with his hands. Naturally, he judges other people the same way. Manny, he did the same thing to you, Shirley says. Looked at my hands? No, he didn't. Oh, yes, all my boyfriends. He did it to them all, everyone. And you, he gave you such a hard time. That's why we sneaked away to be married. You were so mad at him. I wasn't mad at your father. I always liked your father. I never knew you sneaked away to be married, Rachel says. And then Mama was so upset that we got married by a justice of the peace that we... Manny sits up. Cheryl, from the moment I met your father... We got married again with a rabbi... Now you remember that, don't you, Manny? Right after, right from the beginning, I liked your father. No, now, Manny, you didn't like him that first year. This is not true, sweetheart. I saw his good qualities in your mother. I loved your mother. No, but we're not talking about Mama. You're retiring, you're rewriting history. Rachel's head goes back and forth as if she's at a tennis match. It's a parent match. Manny, my father, when you first met him, he literally terrified you. Remember what you said to me? Cheryl, my memory is crystal clear on this point. Cheryl, I am absolutely positive. The argument continues, but Rachel isn't following it. It's just come to her why Izzy was so rude to Lewis. He was jealous. Jealous of her, 